AI is right on the top of India's priority yeah. list. And, uh, and, and you, you see this race, we're hoping to get there. But you, would you want to delve a little on the countries that are really not where they should be in the race uh, where AI is concerned because the kind of money that's being invested, uh, the kind of technology that's needed? Yeah, well, I mean, you, you put your finger on, I think what worries people, or perhaps worries people here in India, which is if you're being outspent by mm -hmm. what's happening in the US, where most of that billion dollars is being spent in the US, not all of it, but a large chunk of it's being spent in the US, a lot of it's being spent by China, and those are the, the two leading nations and very much neck and neck today. Uh, and there, you know, there are, but what's interesting, and, and what you should take away from, from the Chinese deep seek model is not that, oh, China is going to win this race and what consequence is that going to have to the, the balance of power in the world, but that China did it with much less money, only a few, only a few million dollars, and they did it despite the fact that, that the US had put trade restrictions on the latest GPUs, the latest computer hardware that you need to run some of this. So China, the fact that China could do that, despite these limitations, less money, less compute, tells you that India can do it. Tells you that where I live, Australia can do it. Tells you that it's not just the people with the deepest pocket. This is a technology. It's often compared to electricity. And actually, that's quite a good analogy because the world benefits from electricity. True. It, it wasn't just Edison and the followers of Edison who got to have the profit of, of electricity. Electricity is everywhere in India, it's everywhere in Africa, it's everywhere, everywhere in the world. Everywhere you go, electricity is powering so many things and also driving the data. Um, and so AI is going to be the same. You're going to see, you know, some people take a little bit of a first mover advantage, like Google has taken a bit of a, an, you know, advantage in the internet world. But it's just the beginning. But that's just the beginning. And in the long term, it is a technology. It's a technology that we know works very well in distributed fashion because intelligence is already distributed. There's eight billion intelligences around the world and they coordinate and cooperate and compete. But that actually is quite a good way to break things mm -hmm. down. And AI will be the same. It won't be the one super duper Google intelligence or the one super duper deep seek intelligence that, that wins. We'll all have our own individual AI. We'll run on our smartphone, run on our computers. And, and that's actually quite a good way um, to spread the power, spread the benefits protect your privacy and all those other things. No, no, India, India is quite uh, keen on that because we completely do understand that uh, AI is the new geopolitical weapon and we must, uh, you know, be on that bandwagon. But I'll draw you back. Uh, it, 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 yeah. and let me say one, one other thing about India before, before we move on, which is that India, if it plays its cards right, could do very well. So, you know, whilst everyone is going to benefit from AI, certain people will benefit more, you know. Uh, from electricity, we know that Siemens and Westinghouse perhaps did a bit better than a few other people. Well, India potentially has the raw materials to do really well in AI. And the two most important raw materials are people, it's the brain power of the people building it, and data. You know, all of this is being driven by what we can learn from the data. Well, India's got a billion something people, that's a huge amount of data. So you have, if you, if you plan it well, you have the raw ingredients to do quite well. Let me draw you back. Uh, how often do you get the question, in the future, uh, will AI be limited to agents or master? The ethics of AI. How many talks have you delivered on that? It's a, it's a concern. It is, and indeed, actually, I think people are more concerned about it today than they were even three or four years ago. Um, almost every conversation I have now, people say, well, if the machine's taking over, should I, should I be worried? <laughs> should we be worried? And how worried should we be? Uh, I don't think you, should, you need to be too worried today about the machines taking over. I think you should be worried about humans behaving badly, whether that be presidents of countries on the other side of the world, um, 
that humans will use these tools to amplify the harm they do. But at the moment, machines, machines do exactly what we tell them to do. That's all they ever do. Now, sometimes we haven't thought carefully enough about what we tell them to do, and anyone who's programmed a computer knows it's incredibly frustratingly literally minded. It does exactly what we t tell it to do, even if that is quite harmful. Um, but, but computers don't have any initiative of their own. They don't have any free will of their own. In that sense, um, you don't have to worry about the Terminator. But you do have to worry that people are going to use the technologies. Humans are going to direct the technologies in ways that could be harmful. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had the three chiefs on this morning. And that's one thing that does worry me. I've, I've, I've had the privilege to speak at the United Nations half a dozen times about how AI is changing completely the character of war. You only have to look at vision coming back from the Ukraine to see that war is being transformed by artificial intelligence. You only have to look at you know, what was happening, the tragedy unfolding in, in Gaza to see again where AI is being making the decisions mm -hmm. as to where the IDF was intervening. Again, AI is completely changing the character and nature of war to think that this is something that isn't going to be necessarily purely a good and that we're going to have to be careful and mindful um, and to think about it because let's not forget there are many technologies that we have regulated as a planet. We've regulated nuclear weapons, we've regulated chemical weapons, biological weapons, cluster munitions, blinding lasers. Actually, when you come down to it, you add it all up. There's quite a bit of technology we've thought about. Well, that is actually morally repugnant. That's going to be distasteful. We, we already actually have good, good enough ways. We have F-35 F fighters, you know. We have, you know, uh, howitzers and lots of ways of defending ourselves and protecting and, uh, and, and do we nearly, really need to use this newest technology in ways that are going to look like a bad Hollywood movie?